Hi, my name is Alex Spencer, and this is a tutorial for Tuts Plus. In my humble opinion, Macs are almost perfect. They have a very low failure rate, and their operating system is second to none. Rarely, if ever, will a user see a blue or gray screen of death, and for lack of a better phrase, they just work. They aren't 100% perfect, though. In this tutorial, I will go over the top five most annoying things about the Mac, and more importantly, I will show you how to fix them. So I will show you how to remove the quacks or clicking sounds while adjusting the volume, how to combat notification overload, how to add a secondary click to your mouse or trackpad, how to lock the Mac if you need to step away for a bit, and lastly, how to adjust the scroll to a more natural feel. Let's get started. It's a very small thing, but to me, one of the most annoying things about the Mac is the quack or clicking sound it makes every time I adjust the volume. Listen closely to the background as I adjust my volume on my Mac. That clicking sound you hear can be very obnoxious and it kind of announces to the world that you're just playing with your volume. So how do we stop that from happening? It's actually very simple. When I go to adjust my volume, before I actually hit the up or down volume keys on my keyboard, I'm going to hold down the shift key. So now listen to see if you can hear any clicks. Shift key is held down. I'm adjusting the volume up and down. And as you can tell, there are no more clicks. I really wish somebody would have shown me the shortcut sooner. Next, I'm going to show you how to combat notification overload. Rarely do I ever hear anyone come up to me and say, man, I wish more things would pop up, ding, or do something that interrupts my train of thought while I'm working. If you're like this and are growing tired of all of the notifications from every program you install, it may be worth taking the time to either turn them off completely or setting up some do not disturb hours. To do this, you're going to go to System Preferences and then the Notification Center. Inside the Notification Center on the left, you'll see a list of every application that is using notifications and you can change them one by one. For me, it's easier to turn on Do Not Disturb during the hours that I'm working. That way, I don't have any of my trains of thought interrupted. And setting Do Not Disturb hours couldn't be easier. I'm first going to check mark next to the times to enable it. I'm going to set my work hours from 10 a.m to 7 p.m. so that way the notification center won't interrupt me while I'm working. Now that I have my notification center under control, I'd like to show you how to enable a right click. Right clicking or secondary clicking as it's sometimes referred to can be invaluable when doing web development. You can right click on things and inspect the element, save them down to your computer, or see exactly where that link is pointing to. Secondary clicking is not just for web development though. It can come in handy in a multitude of different situations. And it was really weird at first that I couldn't secondary click on my MacBook Air's trackpad or use it on a magic mouse out of the gate. To enable secondary clicking, I'm going to come back into my system preferences, go to the trackpad, I'm going to look for the point and click section, and I'm going to look for secondary click. As you can see, I can set a secondary click to a tap with two fingers, a click in the bottom right corner, or a click in the bottom left corner. A click in the bottom right corner made the most sense for me, but you can choose whichever setting feels best to you. This exact process would be similar if I were using a mouse, except when in System Preferences, instead of clicking on the trackpad icon, I would click on the mouse settings and enable a secondary click via the mouse. Now I would like to demonstrate how to lock your Mac if you need to step away for a bit. Nowadays, our computers hold extremely sensitive personal and professional information. Therefore, it's only natural that you would want to lock or password protect your Mac anytime you stepped away from it. Unfortunately, Macs don't make this incredibly intuitive to set up. The remedy will in fact be a two-step process. Step one will be to set your screensaver to require a password every time it gets stopped. The second step will be to set a hot corner to fire up that screensaver anytime you need to step away. So, from System Preferences, I'm going to go to Security and Privacy, and I'm going to make sure the require password immediately after sleep or screensaver begins is checked. This will ensure that anytime my computer goes to sleep or has a screensaver activated, that a password will appear before I can start using the computer again. Now I need to set the hot corners to fire up a screensaver anytime I'm about to walk away from my computer. So I'm going to go back to the system preferences main menu and I'm going to choose desktop and screensaver. From there, I'm going to make sure I'm on the screensaver tab choose my preferred screensaver, and then come down to hot corners. You'll notice the top right is a hot corner for me, and I have it set to start screensaver. So now, if I'm about to walk away from my computer, I move my cursor to the very top right corner, 
This will start up the screensaver, and anytime I come back or anyone tries to change any settings on my computer, before the screensaver goes away, they'll be prompted for a password. My computer has been effectively locked. Lastly, I'd like to show you how to set the scroll direction to be a little bit more natural in my opinion. When I first bought my MacBook Air, one of the biggest problems I ran into was the scroll on the trackpad. I would flick up and it would scroll down. I would flick down and it would scroll up. It felt like I was in a bizarro world. I'm actually told this particular type of scroll feels more natural to the masses, but it was anything but natural to me. So to invert the scrolls and set them back to a more natural feeling, I'm going to go back into my system preferences, again choosing either mouse or trackpad depending on what I'm using, going to scroll and zoom, and making sure the scroll direction, natural, is unchecked. This brings back the scroll down, go down, scroll up, go up feel that I was more accustomed to. Now that I have shared my top five annoyances with you and how to overcome them, there may be one or two in there that apply similarly. If so, I hope these fixes have provided a bit more sanity to your user experience. If not, leave a comment below with your top annoyances, and I'm sure the good readers of Tuts Plus will be happy to assist. Thanks for watching.